I'm now preparing the monobath solution. So I'm gonna use this, I think this is three cc's. I should I probably fill this with water because I'm gonna have to clean the solution with water. I mean, clean the extra film. Okay, so I have prepared some a bath of uh, distilled water. And I'm gonna fill this up to two milliliters. Two, I would say. Okay. We will x-ray the object. Um, I don't really think we need a guide counter for this. We'll just back away, I guess. Is there any other precaution I should take? Oh yeah, where even is the remote? Let's power it up. Right is positive. Left is negative. Okay. Okay, I think it's good. So now I think I'll just leave it to dry. So I finished drying the film for the most part, and um, I have to say, for the f the results are actually very nice. I can see, I mean, maybe uh, if I put more light, but I actually got the internals really nicely. You can see the traces, you can see, I think that's an IC, I'm not really sure. And uh, yeah, it's really impressive. I'm really pr uh, happy about the result. An x-ray machine requires two things. I mean, actually three things, uh, an x-ray tube, first of all, and a high voltage supply and a lower voltage supply. The high voltage supply, in my case, starts here with a lead acid battery. And this one is rated uh, 12 volts and 12 amp hours. It goes to a relay, which is remote controlled, so I can operate the machine at a distance and limit my exposure to the X-ray radiation. That is fed into a Xevious driver, um, and that uh, drives the flyback transformer. Now, this is the core is from a f flyback. The ferric core is from a flyback transformer. But the secondary I replaced with my own 3D printed bobbin, and I've calculated it so that the output is around 2.2 kilovolts. The reason why I did this is because normal flybacks are nowhere near the voltages required for an X-ray tube. So you need to multiply the voltage to get the proper amount. Unfortunately, this only w works if you have an AC. Um, if you start off with AC and then, which th which is then rectified to DC through the multiplier. So, in order to uh, do this, you can't start with a regular flyback because normal flybacks have an internal rectifier which rectifies the voltage um, to DC. Instead of trying to remove the rectifier, which would be much harder, I decided to dissolve the plastic casing using an acetone bath. I then replaced it with this 3D printed bobbin. 
Now this goes into the multiplier, which I calculated I need I needed around 15 stages to multiply it and I'm using these 20 kilovolt 20 kilovolt and capacitors and 12, 20, 20 kilovolt diodes. I think you need around like twice the rating of your transformer, but I'm not quite sure. Um, so yeah, and uh, this is then goes to the x-ray uh, box or whatever the enclosure. And it's all lead lined. I have the x-ray tube inside that Tupperware container. It's all filled with oil and the positive of the high voltage uh, goes to one end. The ground connects to the one of the filament wires. And that's how you connect the system. And yeah. Uh, the low voltage supply consists of a computer switching, I think it's a switching power supply for computers and su such. And then that goes to a voltage regulator. This is an LM338 IC, and I have a heat sink, heat, heat sink there. Um, you know, drive away the heat, I guess. And uh, I'll show the circuit for this more in detail, but uh, basically, yeah, that just goes into the filament. I also have a fuse here um, in series um, in order to stop any well if the current if it's drawn too much current or some something this will uh well it'll burn out and it'll stop the stop it um the problem i was having for the longest time is how to ground the machine i mean i didn't ground it properly initially so the way i've uh wired it is that the high voltage is connected to one of the filament and that filament is the negative of this um, uh, regulator and the regulator is then connected to the negative of the switching power supply and that is connected to ground of the mains outlet so no potential difference can be created and it will not destroy the system which happened um, twice when I did not ground the system so if you want to do it like me you need these the mains cable with the three wires and the what the whatever you need to search up the colors but for me the green cable is ground and I think brown is live and blue is neutral so I'll just show it there you need to connect your high voltage and low voltage negative to ground so if you want to develop your own x-ray uh, films you need to buy these um, I'll probably leave a link or something, or the name of it in the description, but uh, this is the process basically. So you need to place the x-ray film, you need to tape it on the target that you want to x-ray. Then you x-ray for a set number of seconds. So for me, I decided to, uh, I think 10 seconds, 10 or more seconds is good for developing film, my film. Then I, uh, fill my 2cc syringe um, well I actually it's 3 cc's but I fill it to 2 cc's or 2 mil, two milliliter of uh, the monobath developer I then inject it uh, inject the film um, after I've extrayed it and I agitate it for 90 seconds I clean it with water and I dry it using a blower so uh, you can I mean you can just let it dry naturally but if you want it quicker you can dry using a blower or similar and that's the uh, process for developing your films so this is the circuit diagram um, it's mainly what I said before and uh, just you know just like I said before this, uh, the negative of the switching is connected to ground. That's grounded. That c connects to the high voltage negative of the uh, multiplier. 
and that's basically it i mean it's basically what i showed before but yeah so you can screenshot this in case you want to build your the system uh, of your a system of your own